Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. The 18th Africa Com Conference took place in Cape Town last week, drawing thousands of delegates and participating ICT companies who used the opportunity to showcase their offerings at the three-day event. Crema Media Senior Contributing Editor Online, Natasha Wurdendahl, attended the annual conference and exhibition. She joins me now. Welcome, Natasha. Thank you. One big announcement at the event was that the second phase of the Africa Coast to Europe submarine cable system would get underway. Uh, could you tell me more about this? Um, yeah, in an exciting move, Alcatel Lucent actually announced that they are going to embark on the second phase of the 17,000 kilometer ACE subsea cable. This specific project now will extend the cable that, that was went live in 2012, the first phase, We'll extend it now through all the way through the West um, African coast to South Africa. It's about 5,000 kilometers they need to add onto that. And it's actually going to enable a broadband boost or more of a broadband boost for the African countries. Um, I think there's, well, there'll be about 25 countries in total once the second phase is complete that'll be connected to this cable. And 13 of those countries are African countries and most of it goes through to Europe connecting them. The, this is actually just the latest cable that's actually hit Africa. Africa has drawn a lot of interest when it comes to submarine cables. Um, this, we've had got multiple cable landings in South Africa, as well as along the west and east coast of Africa. I mean, we have WAX, which is a 14,000 kilometer um, cable that is linking South Africa along the western coast, uh, West Africa coast through to UK as well. Um, we've got SAT3, we've got Main 1, um, th and the list will go on and on. And this is just the latest and an exciting move to get broadband to Africa. What else took the limelight at AfricaCom? Well, an interesting one is 5G seems to be gaining traction at the moment. The, the idea is still a concept. The guys are working behind the scenes now to try and make it a reality or a commercial reality by 2020. Now, 5G is pretty much the technology we're going to need for the Internet of Things. Um, as more and more devices get connected, we're going to need, well, bigger, better technology to, to run it off. And uh, the companies all over there seem to be showcasing their ideas, their plans to start trialing 5G. And I mean, a lot of the um, Asian and European countries, they've, they've got trials underway already. Um, and they've proven that it is actually viable. They just now need to get it commercialized. And that's likely to happen by about 2020. And it seems that, yeah, it, it's a big deal at the moment. Um, I mean, we've only got, f well, less than five years to go to get it, uh, get it on the shelves. But uh, Africa, unfortunately, will, will have to wait a while longer. Uh, most of the companies, while being excited, um, all say that, yes, it was, it's a viable opportunity internationally at the moment. But uh, when it comes to Africa, we're going to have to gradually phase up. I mean, we're working on LTE at the moment, particularly in South Africa and some East African countries as well. We're rolling out LTE successfully despite our spectrum issues. Um, and then we'll just gradually work our way up from 4G and then to 5G. And it will take uh, a while for it to get to us. So. There were some other notable announcements, including the launch of a solar powered mobile charger. Can you elaborate on that? Um, in a move to actually get um, a charging device to rural communities and, and towns where there is no electricity to enable um, their communities or, or the citizens of those towns to charge their mobile device, World Panels launched a, a solar powered charger um, as a means to get them connected. I mean, in, in Africa, across Africa, many more people have phones, but they don't actually have a way to charge them. And now to actually boost their, their opportunities that mobile can provide, this little charger will stream electricity using obviously the sun. I mean, it's sunny Africa, if you want to call it that. I mean, we've got enough resources here to do it. And then charge their phones. And it's a durable device, so it's been drop tested. It can main, well, withstand the worst of weathers. It's, it's a very robust little machine. Um, and now, as it's starting to roll out, they've World Panel signed a deal with Vodacom to try and get it out to the market, you know, to distribute, uh, distribute it for now um, through Vodacom. And in the interim, they're actually trying to work around other distributors, maybe, you know, smaller scale uh, community distributors where they can actually get it out 
into Africa, starting with South Africa and throughout Africa to actually get these guys powered up when it comes to it. Um, one of the guys also mentioned that it could also offer an opportunity for these guys to, to uh, start up a little business. You would offer to charge their phones for a certain amount of money across little rural townships so that it saves from every person having to buy their own solar panel device. Now, at the moment, it's a bit too expensive to get it, get it rolled out um, all throughout Africa at the moment, and many rural communities can't afford it. But we'll have a look at it. We'll watch that space and see if they can actually successfully get it out into Africa. Thank you, Natasha. Thanks. That's the Second Take show for this week. Thank you for watching, and join us again next time for more news analysis.